Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about my Starlink situation. The kit comes with a satellite dish, uh, a 70-foot 75 foot wire uh, and the modem, the wireless modem to hook up. So I ordered a Ethernet adapter and a, a mesh adapter which the way I understand it uh, helps you broadcast your Wi-Fi better around the property. Now Walter has bit off a big hunk of meat on this pot roast. Might be more than I could chew. Where'd that wasp go? I hope he didn't land on my head. Must be a wasp nest over my head somewhere. Anyway, I thought I'd discuss the situation. My equipment is here, and I've done some measuring the stepping off, which I should have already done. And my 75-foot wire ain't really going to cut the mustard. Let me walk out here in the yard and explain to you. Now, my, my modem for my regular internet service and all my Ethernet connectors and everything is right inside this room here, about that high up on a table. So I roughed if I'd like to go in right there on this part. I'll get back to explaining that in a minute. But I got out here looking at the sky. You have to take your cell phone. Any of you people already got Starlink. I don't think I'm stupid trying to explain it, but not everybody has Starlink. So they tell you, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, point the uh, satellite dish sorted to the north, which is that direction right there. And it's going to start out pointing up, but it's got to pan down. Well, it looks like the top of that red tip tree is going to have to be interfering. So it's going to have to come down. If I set it up over here by the bird bath and look north, I'm interfered with by that oak tree and this crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtles are easy to trim back. That's no problem. But I stepped off my footage, just, you know, one large step as a yard, and I measured it. And when I get out here where I think I got the best reception, right along in here, it's right at 150 feet. 75 foot cabling on the cut it. So I had to go online and order a 150 foot cable. I got both the, all the other equipment in there on the computer room floor. I might show it to you in this video. We're well, probably gonna hire somebody to come out here and cut these red tips down if they're not too expensive. If they are, I'll just top the thing out with a chainsaw. There's a chance I could go on the roof of the house, but Walter's 76 years old, got no business on the roof of the house. So we're gonna go for here, but what I'm gonna do first, probably tomorrow or day after, depends on the heat out here, I'm just gonna temporarily run the wire across the ground and wait, stand the satellite dish right here on the ground and see what kind of reception I get without cutting any trees down. From different videos I've watched, the uh, satellite will search around, looking kind of straight up, but it tilts down at a certain amount of degrees too. But when you hold your cell phone up there to see what's blocking the way, you can see about the top third of that tree in the obstruction. So there's a good chance it's going to interfere with my signal. But I'm so frustrated with the other internet, I'll cut down every tree I got on the property. Let's take a look at what came in the box. It, uh, like I say, I went on order line today and ordered the... Uh, 150 foot cable and I also ordered a pole. $55 for a little six foot pole. But the problem is getting a pole that has the right dimensions inside. I could get out here with a steel pipe and put it in the ground. Dig a pole hole and put some cement in there. But it, it's loose and flopping around in there and ain't gonna get a good signal. 
So Walter's gonna have to just kind of tinker around a little bit at a time until I get my internet service working. Now, if I get a trencher, go rent a trencher and trench across this yard, I can, you gotta bury that cable. You can't leave it on top of the yard, you won't be able to cut the grass. So, if I go in this room here, means I'll have to go under this walkway. But that would be much shorter than going in through under that window over there. Because you'd have to go up the post, across the ceiling, down the inside wall, through the wall, into the house, to the modem. You can't go on the back side of the house, that's the south side. We got to point it north. If I set it right here, in this area right here, look at there, that big old oak tree is right in the way. And if that oak tree wasn't there, that would be a perfect place. Anyway, it might take Walter six months to a year to get all this little stuff done as far as permanent installation. But we sure going to give it a whirl. Anybody want to dig me a trench, I'll loan you my shovel. <laughs> Got out here a while ago and watered my tomatoes. I'm going to go inside. Hey, Froggy. How are you? We'll take a look at what I got in the box. If it don't work, then I'm out. Let's see, how much have I spent so far? 648, I spent 148 today. Might as well say I'm into them for $1,000 right ahead. Time I buy more equipment. But I would be willing to pay $2,000 if I can get decent internet service. And Starlink, just if you run straight off of their little modem that comes with it, it's strictly Wi-Fi. But you can hook it up to an Ethernet adapter these days. That's why I ordered the Ethernet adapter. I just got to learn how to do it. And straight wire my computers inside straight to the thing, just like you would on any internet modem. But if I, the Wi-Fi works, I'm going to hook it up temporary this weekend probably. If it's working, I'll make a video on that. Like I said, it's just going to be a temporary situation until I get permanently installed. Sure, wish that oak tree was gone. If I'd have known what I know now, but I never planted it. Let's go look in the box and see what Starlink sent me. Well, guess what, viewers? Walter did not win Mega Millions. But nobody else did either. The next Mega Millions is going to be the highest Mega Millions there ever was. And you can bet I got a chance, I got a ticket for it. See what's in the boxes real quick. I'm standing in the light. That wasn't very smart. What's that ding dong? My little mesh router must be awful small. I don't know how to open the box. Maybe I got it upside down. Oh, it's perforated. Oh, this is going to be my Ethernet adapter. We're going to plug this thing into the bottom of the Starlink modem. So that's going to be my Ethernet adapter. This is going to be my wire mesh modem.
Now, I should point out that my video production on Starlink is not a how-to video. It's a YouTube and everybody else show me how to. I'm going to do some on-the-job training. Learn as we go. Boy, this is a pretty looking something. I probably didn't have to have this, but I ordered it anyway. Many of my viewers are going to tell me I wasted my money on that thing. But if it'll expand my Wi-Fi coverage, it might be well worth it. point out to my viewers this box is heavier than you think it is it uh the dish is considerably more heavy than say a direct tv satellite dish i'm just going to show you what's in the box i'm not going to cover in any great detail the remainder of today's video but there's the thing you stick your satellite dish in if you're going to stand it out in the front yard hole for this do flunker and we'll just stick it right in that dish carry it out there in the yard they didn't make the instructions none too complicated did they three little pictures on how to we got a wire in there 75 foot long and a modem don't look any different than the one I pulled out of the box a while ago. Anyhow, folks, y'all stick with me. Let's see if people all can figure out how to get this thing working. the video for today it's getting late in the day and I'm tired but anyway y'all stick with me and let's see if we can get this thing working one of these days any of your comments or suggestions or improvements that you think I could do during this project let me know <laughs>